Let's turn to one-sided limits. We have seen previously that the limit of a function does not always exist. One of the examples we looked at was this particular function f of x. And we noticed that the limit of this function at x equal 1 does not exist. Let's go over y once again. For the limit of that function at 1 to exist, we would need the values of f of x to be made as close as we want to the limit by taking x sufficiently close to 1. So close to 1 means within a small interval centered at 1, except possibly uh, x equal 1. If we look at a small interval centered at 1 and the corresponding part of the graph of the function, you see that you have two disconnected pieces. So when x is approaching 1 and is smaller than 1, so from the left, the corresponding point on the graph of the function has a y value that is approaching 0. On the other hand, if x is approaching 1 from the right when x is greater than 1, the y value of the corresponding point on the graph is approaching y equal 4. So there is no way to approach a single number as x is approaching 1 without specifying from which side x is approaching 1. Therefore, the limit of the function at 1 does not exist. This is a limit in the usual sense. However, we can specify why this limit fails to exist or how it fails to exist. To give a little more information on the behavior of the function near x equal 1, we can say that the limit from the left is 0 and the limit from the right is 4. Now this notation that x is approaching 1 with a negative exponent next to 1 means that x is approaching 1 and x is less than 1. And we're going to call this limit the limit of f from the left. Similarly, this x is approaching 1 with a plus exponent next to the 1 means that x is approaching 1 and x is greater than 1. And we're going to call this limit the limit from the right. More formally, the limit of f at a from the left is l. If the values of f of x can be made as close to l as we want by taking x sufficiently close to a and less than a. The only difference with the definition of limit that we gave before is this n less than a. Formally, what that means is in the epsilon delta definition of the limit, we need to modify the condition of x being within a distance delta of a because now we want x to be within delta of a and at the same time less than a. And this is how we express this condition. Instead of taking the absolute value, in other words, the distance between x and a, we look at a minus x. This a minus x should be positive for x to be less than a, but we still want x to be within delta of a. Similarly, we can look at the limit from the right, and we're going to say that this limit is L if the values of f of x can be made as close to L as we want by taking x sufficiently close to a, but this time we ask that x be greater than a. Formally, we can also uh, express this condition of being greater than a by asking that uh, not the absolute value of x minus a be between 0 and delta, but x minus a itself. This way, x is greater than a and within delta of a. Now, if you rewrite these conditions for the limit from the left on top and from the right underneath and compare with the formal definition for the regular limit, you see that the only difference is that we drop the absolute value and uh, looked at the two different cases for the value of the absolute value. And you see that that means that um, the limit of f of x at a in the usual sense is L exactly when both one-sided limits exist, the limit from the left and from the right, and are equal to L. 
So in some cases, where in particular when the function is defined piecewise and the two pieces connect at A, to um, decide whether there is a limit even in the usual sense, we may have to look at the two one-sided limits. So this is the result to remember about these one-sided limits. Now to look over some examples, we're going to turn to the next video. I'll see you there.